goes on guys we're back here again with yet another review and today we're going to be taking a look at something that i really haven't done before i mean this is like a reissue but i still think it deserves a video we're going to be taking a look at the brand new release i don't really know what you want to fucking call that we're going to be calling it the new release of marvel's the watcher by diamond select toys the marvel select version um always wanted this figure but for the longest time it was going close to 300 big ones absolutely fucking not so when they re-released it i was like hell yeah i knew some stores were gonna get it um and i waited because pre-orders with online shops suck so i didn't want to do that but we got the watcher i love the art on the side might cut that out and like put that in the corner of the room because you know the watcher's always watching um this is a great read-up. This is how all read-ups should be. Take some time into the figures that you're putting. There's the figure right there. Uh, proof of purchase and barcode, which is crazy. That's how you know how old this thing is. Proof of purchase. Nothing really on the top or side because there really isn't one because, you know, it's Marvel Select. This is not collector-friendly packaging. The second you open it up, the package is ruined. But that's what we do around here. We open toys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pop this big-headed bitch open. So getting the watcher out of the packaging here, I gotta say, it's actually not exactly what I expected in some regards, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Were the things that I anticipated they would be, not are they not there? Yeah, there are some, like, I mean, I'm just gonna go out and say, he does not have any articulation from the waist down, and I was not aware of that. Um, but honestly, I don't find myself really needing him to have articulation past the waist, so... Do, I don't know. It's like a catch-22. It's like, should it be there? Probably. Does it need to be? Also probably not. So, I don't know. Whatever. I'll go through it and you judge whether or not you want to pick this up. Because I think that he's going to sell out pretty fast. So, go around. Find him somewhere. I'm sure your comic book store has him. I'm on the East Coast. So, if I'm getting them, then everywhere in the country has them right now. So, just keep that in mind. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this head sculpt here. Uh, this is probably the biggest head in my collection at this point. Like, uh, Venusaur's got a pretty big head, but he there are some big heads. But this guy, this guy takes the cake. He's got, there's no detail, like, whatsoever on it. The back gets a little scuffed, but honestly, I think, like, if you just kind of wipe it off, it'll come off. I just like kind of licked my finger and it came off. Uh, the head sculpt itself looks really good. You know, he looks really menacing. The shadows look great, like how it like catches his face. I really like that. The lip paint and the eye paint looks good. I like the black line around the eyes. That's a really nice touch. Uh, the big whatever the fuck this thing is looks great with some paint shading on it, like some airbrush detail on there, which is carried all throughout the cape, which has a really nice sculpt. There's got paint detail on the inside. And then looking at the body itself, um... You know, their Watcher emblems are sculpted and painted very nicely. You get a little bit of silver on the center of the star. I don't know if it's a star, but I'm going to call it a star. Uh, you get his little stubby arms. Well, I guess they're not stubby, but they're shorter than a normal arm. But, yeah, no, you get those. You get the big gold gloves, which are painted very, very nicely. Um, and then the rest of the body is just sculpted, you know, to look like his loincloth, which has great paint, paint detail in it. It's a little soft. He does have his chonies under there. But then, like I said, there are no articulation points in the lower legs. So they're just sculpted. Um, you know, he's got some good physique there, but they are smaller. And, you know, the paint detail in there is very nice as well. So uh, also, I would like to mention that there's paint shading all across the skin. You can see it, especially on the arms. But there is some on the neck and a little bit on the head. It doesn't show up good on camera, but like there's like some airbrushing detail on there. So honestly, I think he looks very good. Um, you know, he doesn't really necessarily need to have a lot, so he doesn't. Uh, you could technically army build this guy too if you really wanted to, because you know, kind of all the watchers, watchers, you can just kind of have them posted up like this around your collection. I only need one, and he's just going to be in the corner. Uh, this is my Uatu. You know, I don't know if, like, there's any jurisdiction between who's who. Like, if other watchers have different clothes or whatever. But for me, this is good enough. As far as accessories, he's not really going to have much. He's just going to come with this base. It's supposed to be the moon. Um, not really sure why it's purple. I actually like that it's purple. But it's got a nice wash on it. This is, like, the actual color. But the wash is so heavy that, you know, it doesn't really look like that. And then, as you can see, there's, like, two grooves and pegs for his feetsies. We pop those in there. He does have peg holes. Spreads his feet out a little bit, but they go in there nice. 
um, and that looks cool. So what I'm probably going to wind up doing eventually in my display is just drill this into the wall or like drill holes there and hang this on the wall and just kind of have him like staring at the rest of my collection. Um, you know, like kind of just have that like that. I think that would be pretty cool. I'm sure other people have done that, but I want to do it too. So that's what I'm going to do. But yeah, this is, per this is all for accessories, but I really don't know what else a watcher would need. I think one thing that would be cool, but I don't, you know, I don't think it's completely necessary would be if like there was like an attachment to his face to be like shining out like, like that. He's like, I, I don't know how to describe it. Kind of like thing poster, like the movie, the thing poster, kind of like how it's like shining that he's watching. I don't know. It's hard to describe what I'm trying to say, but that, that would be pretty cool. And it's like the only other thing I can think of that he could come with. Um, as far as articulation, he's got a big ball joint at the base of the head or a little ball joint, just a single ball peg, pop that in there very nicely. It's a little loose, but it'll hold the pose. Rounds all around, rotate 360. Uh, so very good movement on the big old dome there. The shoulders move up, down, they will rotate 360. You're just gonna have to move them out of the way of the collar and the cape. Bicep swivel, single jointed elbow that only gets in, you know, about 90. Rotation at the forearm where the glove meets the arm and then hinge at the hand. You get a waist swivel, and that's about it, which I didn't know that. I thought he had full articulation in the legs. Like, even if they were just T-joints, single joint knees, and an ankle hinge, I think that would have been better. But again, as long as he stands, I'm really not seeing a problem with it. So it's it's a catch-22 on one hand. I want it there, but then on the other, it really doesn't need to be. So I guess you just pick your poison with that kind of thing. So not much articulation, but definitely what he needs. As far as scalature goes, I kind of went, um, you know, obviously I'm buying this with the intent of putting it with my Marvel Legends collection. So here he is next to DC Multiverse, uh, Batman Dark Knight Returns, and Silly Monkey Kong by NECA. So he is taller than both of them. I mean, the Watcher's supposed to be big, but, you know, if he's taller than two 7-inch scale figures, which he is a 7-inch scale figure, how's he going to look next to a 6-inch scale figure, which I think most people are more interested in to put in with their Marvel Legends? Well, here he is next to Zombie Cap, and I think though I picture Owatu being big. I actually think he's too small for his own line, um, so I think that he works better in Marvel Legends than he does in Diamond Select. So I like this a lot. But if you need him next to a Diamond Select Marvel figure, here he is next to Drax, and he is still bigger than Drax. Drax I always thought was pretty big. Anyway, I use Drax from... I use this Guardian set as my main comic book Guardian, Guardians display because um, I like Drax to be bigger, and it's my favorite design for the Guardians, so that's fine by me. But yeah, he's supposed to be bigger, and he is, so if you want him for your Marvel Legends, that totally works. So it's that point in the video where I know you guys are asking yourself, yo, Ant, what the fuck are you thinking of this figure? And I gotta say, he's pretty good. He's kind of, to be honest, almost exactly what I expected, even though I didn't expect the, the leg thing, which I know that probably doesn't make sense, but he's what I he does what I want him to do. I thought the legs were gonna have articulation, but I'm honestly not upset that they don't. So, you know whatever again it's a pick your poison kind of thing do you, are you okay with the fact that he doesn't have like articulation are you okay with the fact that he's diamond select because there are some chumps out there that only buy marvel legends because they're marvel legends even though they're either shitty figures or the same character a million times when you could go to other companies for other things yeah you know whatever I, I no hate on you whatsoever i just think marvel legends really like milks their fans i think like especially with those like x-men uh like uh, VHS figures, they are shit. I don't know why people are buying those. Morph I can understand because not a lot of people, you know, Morph is new, but like that Wolverine and the Jubilee and the Storm, they look terrible, but, and they're super expensive, but that's just, because like they're like the same, almost this, after shipping, the same price as this. So, uh, I don't know. We could talk about that in another video, but anyway, if I was to give this figure a rating at a price point of $30 to $35, I'm going to go ahead and give this a solid 8 out of 10. And I know that's kind of high considering what um, this review kind of looked like, but he does what he needs to do, and that's all I care about. He would have been a, If he had articulated legs, even if they were simple articulation like the hands or, or the arms, he would have been a 10 out of 10. But I did knock two points for not having articulation in the legs. But that's not a lot because he still is a very good figure. But anyway... 
enough rambling. Don't want to waffle here. That's all I got for today. So if you've not already, please do yourself the favor and me and like, comment, subscribe. Also, please be sure to comment on this uh Comment on the video, even though I just fucking said that. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram and TikTok, too. I have a lot of fun over there, um, and I'm sure you will, too. Uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway soon, guys, so stay tuned for that. But, as always, I leave you guys with the bearing question. You copping? Let me know. See you guys in the next one. Peace.